Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Maloney. I'm joined today by Joe Woolley, the CEO of Nashville LGBT Chamber. Joe, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So we're going to be looking at how the, this new economy has emerged due to the pandemic, new ways of strategizing, new ways of planning, this new norm we find ourselves in. But before we go there, I wanted to ask you on the personal side, are there any new personal norms that you started during the pandemic that you're going to continue with in this post-pandemic climate we find ourselves entering into? Um, that is a great question. Uh, what I'm finding as we come out is the things that I, I love being back uh, to in-person events, to being around people. I didn't realize until the pandemic how much I fed off of others, how much energy I got from being around others. Um, so it's great to be back there. I think the personal care that I, I realized I had to take um, personal care of myself during the pandemic, there was such a need, there was such a um, want for assistance and help. And um, I hated to say no or not be able to help somebody, but I got to a point that um, I had to start taking care of my mental health, start taking care of me. And I'm going to continue that on through the pandemic, um, focusing on that um, exercise, especially help me. Um, but knowing that it's okay to say no, and it took the pandemic and the need to get me to the point where it's okay to say no. Advocacy is one of the main objectives of your organization. And as of recently, the chamber has been focusing on fighting anti-LGBT uh, legislation, specifically the two bathroom bills that were recently passed. As of today, what has been the economic fallout from uh, these bills that have been passed? And what is the current status of your advocacy, advocacy efforts in regards to this matter? Yeah, we take on discriminatory legislation because it's bad for business. It harms the economy. It does not allow businesses to attract and retain the talent that they need. That's any discriminatory legislation. Specifically, anti-LGBT discriminatory legislation, it makes it so LGBT people are afraid to move to the state. It makes it so, uh, so allies, uh, straight allies or, or straight people that have LGBT children are afraid to move to the state and live and work here. So, uh, you know, it also goes against the values of a lot of these businesses. So we advocate against discriminatory legislation on those grounds. Um, Tennessee had the most uh, anti-LGBT laws proposed. We had the most laws passed this year. We are the first state to pass a bathroom bill since North Carolina did so um, notoriously in 2016 and, and faced $3.75 billion in economic fallout. Tennessee is the first state to pass one since then. And we didn't just pass one, we passed two. Um, one of those specifically targeted businesses telling them what their bathroom policies had to be, or they had to put a giant sign on the front of their business. Um, it was a, I've never seen a year like this uh, with the level of discriminatory legislation that came our way and then actually moved forward. Now that it has moved forward, we spoke out against it uh, during the legislative session, warning of the, that fallout, warning of what could happen, warning of what happened in North Carolina and other states that have moved forward discriminatory legislation. Now that we've done it, we are seeing that fallout. And we are working hard to stem that here because it affects our members, it affects the state's economy, it affects the LGBT people living in the state. Um, and we're doing all that we can to stop that fallout from happening, but it is out there. There are conventions that are very concerned about bringing groups of people here to, um, especially Nashville, which is uh, as 40% of the economy uh, of the state, 60% of the tourism and hospitality economy of the state. You know, Nashville is a progressive, wonderful place. It's a safe place, it's an inclusive place, but it's in Tennessee and Tennessee is passing these laws and it is stopping people from coming to Tennessee right. to visit, to do uh, for tourism, and then also stopping them from moving here. Amazon has set up shop uh, with 5,000 jobs in downtown Nashville for a logistics hub. Um, they have been attracting talent from all over the, the country to come and live here. And now that these laws are being passed, those employees are saying, I don't want to live in, in Tennessee anymore. Can I move to Virginia or can I move to Washington and work in another office for Amazon? Other companies are feeling that same uh, pressure yeah. from their employees that say, this isn't where I want to live. I don't feel safe here. My child uh, has anti-trans bathroom policies in their schools. 
I'm not going to subject them to that. Next year, we have a, a very damaging anti-trans healthcare bill that'll be up. And I really worry about that passing and moving forward because that will affect thousands of children's lives. And you don't mess with parents' kids. And I think you will, if unfortunately it passes, I think you will see an exodus of people leaving wow. with their children so they can get the health care that they need. Um, we organize businesses to push back against this. We bring this business argument. Uh, it is so important for businesses, especially large corporations, to voice their values for their leadership to come down and talk to legislators and say, this is the values of our company. This is what we believe in. And even if you don't believe in it, you can see and believe in the economic fallout that comes with discriminatory legislation. And they need to have those conversations with legislators to say, you know, stop this. Tennessee is a great place to do business. It's one of the best states out there with our taxes, our, um, our business, small business support, our uh, incentives that we've done. Um, it is just a great business climate here in the state. We have done all of this and now we're working against ourselves by passing discriminatory legislation that stops people from wanting to come and live here and work. With the current spotlight on increasing equitable opportunities for companies both big and small, how have you seen local businesses uh, turn more of their attention to and focusing on keeping diversity and inclusion top of mind when executing different uh, outreach campaigns? And what is the biggest challenge you've seen businesses face uh, with organically integrating this diversity and inclusion into those campaigns without it coming across either contrived or inauthentic? I think people are really smart when it comes to this. They can look at a business and they can see with LGBT uh, inclusion, for example, are you throwing up a, a rainbow icon for Pride Month and trying to sell us a product that has rainbows on it? Are you committed to you know, supporting the LGBT community and equality issues year long? Do you have programs for your employees? Or do you just talk about pride and LGBT issues again in Pride Month in June? Um, people, both consumers and employees can see that really easily and they'll figure it out fast. Companies that get this right, it is um, from the top down. It is senior leadership saying, this is, a, this is our values, this is what we believe in. And it goes down through the company and everybody is uh, required that works there to be respectful and allow people to bring their whole self to work. And that goes for many types of diversity. Employee resource groups are out there for LGBT employees, um, people of color uh, resource groups, uh, Black, Asian, uh, Hispanic. You've got here in the South, faith resource groups, because faith is such a strong part of everybody's, you know, day-to-day -day lives here in the South, and you bring it to work and you need to learn how to talk about it. I know people that are moving here uh, to the South and to Nashville. That has been a, a jarring uh, thing, for example. So they've started a faith ERG. It's not a religious affiliated one, but it's one where you can come and express your faith. This is where the, the bridges get built um, for change. You can have a faith ERG come together with an LGBT ERG or a business resource group, and they talk to each other, not at each other. When you are in a professional setting uh, like the workplace, you're required to bring certain standards and listen and, and have a conversation. And that's where education happens. And that's where bridges get built and change actually happens. Um, young people today are making their choices of where to work, not based on salary, not based on what the break room policies are and, and what the perks in the break room are like beer or ping pong. They are making their decisions on where to work in corporate America on if they can bring their whole authentic self to work. Inclusion is the name of the game right now. Inclusion builds diversity. If you don't have inclusionary policies, but you're wanting a diverse workforce, you're never gonna get there because they're gonna leave to go somewhere that they feel included. So it's, um, it's an exciting time. I was really worried about this work when, when COVID-19 uh, first came forward. I thought this might be a program that got cut right away, but it um, through the conversation that we went through around systemic racism and social injustice, it has only become even more important for corporate America. The Chamber launched its Rainbow Connection series to help members and the community stay communicated and, uh, sorry, 
the chamber launched its Rainbow Connects Connection series to help members and uh, the community stay connected and informed during this new normal, this new economy. Tell us a little bit more about the series and how this effort and efforts like it can be a model for future advancement of common business interests, economic growth, and inclusion in the workplace and society. Yeah, when we when um, the pandemic hit, we reinvented everything we were doing and took it online, took it virtual to keep doing our work, to keep connecting. Uh, we've been doing networking for 23 years as a chamber, a monthly networking event. We didn't miss a month. We brought everybody to get it okay. together uh, on Zoom. And we said, you know, what's everybody working on? How are you handling uh, the lockdown? Uh, what's your business like? And people leaned on each other in a, in a virtual setting. Connection became so, so much more important than it already was when we were all locked away in our houses. So I'm really proud of the work that we did with the Rainbow Connection series, especially around our Network Connect programming. We started an educational program, uh, Classroom Connect, where we brought learning opportunities virtually to everybody, especially around um, COVID recovery. So, you know, what you need to know around um, getting through COVID, how, how do you get small business loans? What are the opportunities and resources out there? I think it was really fascinating to watch how people and organizations had to reinvent what they were doing. And, and we were just like that. One of the things that I'm proud of is we knew that a chamber of commerce and business support like the chamber offers is probably very low on small businesses list of priorities when they were going through the pandemic. So we waived all membership fees and wow. opened our memberships up for, for anybody to take advantage of the resources that we were offering. Um, and our corporate members stepped up to fund that and support the chamber through those times. Wow. Uh, I think going forward, we're going to be in a hybrid world for a long time. So if you are doing an in-person event, you should think of what your online uh, component could be. These hybrid events are, I think, the way of the future. No longer does everybody have to be in a, a cafeteria for a, for a luncheon series to hear somebody speak. You can set up a camera and you can watch from anywhere. Uh, Zoom has changed the world and online platforms like it. So I would just say that we, going forward, and, and everybody should be thinking about how to reach the most people possible uh, and in, it's a whole new world um, to do that. We, it's exciting that, um, you know, you can have networking take place in a, a room full of people trading business cards, then you can have a program, but you can also have that networking take place online that's watching the same program when you come together for that. So that's the way we'll keep moving forward. And now that we find ourselves in this new landscape, what's next for the Nashville LGBT Chamber? Well, um, Nashville is still growing, it's booming, so is the chamber here. So there's lots more work to do connecting uh, our corporate members uh, to better themselves on LGBT diversity and inclusion issues. Um, we're gonna keep supporting our small businesses. Our small business economy was really hit hard, but it is thriving here in Nashville coming out of the pandemic. Um, so the same support and uh, connections that we've always offered. I think when you look at the state level legislation that is coming down, the need for a statewide chamber is so important. A lot of the times legislators will say, well, I don't care what Nashville's gonna be affected by. Um, you know, I'm rural Tennessee. I don't have any businesses that are speaking out against this. I don't know any LGBT people in my rural district. We are looking at going statewide to become the Tennessee LGBT chamber um, or forming some other type of group that can bring a statewide business presence around these issues to the state capitol to talk to elected officials and to educate, not just here in Nashville, but across the state of Tennessee. Right. Well, thank you again. That was Joe Woolley, the CEO of the Nashville LGBT Chamber. My name is Abby Malone, and you've been watching Invest Insights. Thank you again, Joe. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on the latest business trends from our knowledgeable experts. Be sure to check out the description below for more information on the segment you just watched. Thanks for tuning in.